Hi there, my friends. This is Bill McDonald, the Come On Sense Math Doctor. Welcome to a video lesson on three of the five most difficult third grade questions from this past year's test that did pretty poorly. Uh, you know, before I get started, somebody was asking me, How is it that you make math seem so easy? And just a quick story. I, I remember one time I was awake at night and remembered, remembered telling God one day that if I ever forget to spend time with you during the day, then you have permission to wake me up at night. And it would be for two reasons. One of them being that I would spend time with you and get to know you and become more like you. But the other one being that I wanted to be able to be awake, coming up with strategies for teachers who are struggling to take or to find a differentiated approach when it comes to reading and writing, math and motivating or managing difficult students. And so I just have to be honest and say that, you know, a lot of you have given me a lot of credit and thanks and praise for some of the strategies that I've shared with you, but I have to kind of pay it forward and kind of give God credit because most of the strategies are just things that come to me when I'm there awake at night, just trying to think, okay, what, here's the skill. How can I go about helping teachers come up with a simpler strategy? And so today you're going to see three of the five most difficult questions in third grade. I've already done the two most difficult those got only like 18% in Texas and 20%. The three we're going to look at today are going to be what I call a plug and play. I'm going to call it pop, plug, operation, and play. Uh, basically, not a guess and check, but seeing which of the four answer choices actually does uh the correct operation based on the numbers that you're given on a plug and play concept. The second one had to do with perimeter and your kids having to know that if all of the sides of an octagon are indeed the same length, then whatever the total perimeter is, the dividend the numerator in this case, just needed to be divided by the divisor, the denominator, to find out how many inches that each side had. So I'm going to be doing an acronym called MOSRED for that one. That one got only 46% correct, less than half of the state. So again, these strategies that I'm sharing are things that you would not be able to find in your typical math curriculum or programs. That's where I would want you to say, let's bring in Bill McDonald to supplement and fill in all the gaps of these math tests that did so poorly for these last two years, because I just honestly feel that if we keep doing what we've been doing, it's not going to work. The last strategy uh, was about uh, the connection between labor and income. And so if the question asks you about a compound subject, labor and income, there has to be some work done on part of the problem and money coming in on the other part. And so uh, I'm gonna show you some strategies on those three types of problems. 
And I'm going to ask that you share this uh, math video with your teacher friends. And please join the word come on as in the opposite of off, sense, as in one of the five senses, and the word math. If you click on that, you'll be able to join my math club, get some strategies. Hopefully you'll uh, incorporate some of my materials into your math program that I'll be using today. And hopefully I'll get to see you in person working with you or your students while you observe on some practical math strategies uh, that will help you in the future based on what's happened in the past. So let's get started. I'm going to start not with the two easier ones, the one about the octagon and perimeter, not the one about labor and income, but probably the one that is more time consuming. Uh, and I apologize, the words are a little bit small uh, because I just, um, I was copying and pasting. So hopefully I can get this down low enough where you'll be able to read what it is that I have there, okay? So this question only was number 27 on the third grade uh, star test. It was 3.5 E in terms of student expectation. But uh, the skill for those of you who are not Texas teachers is using world world relationships, using pairs in a table and verbal descriptions. So basically if there's a T chart like this, and they have numbers, what you need to figure out the consistency is, is the relationship between the first number and the second one. And so the title of the left column based on the amusement park rides is the number of tickets. How many tickets do you need? And the second column being how many rides can you get based on those tickets? So plug and play stands for is pop, which is plug, operation, and play. And even though I have a plus sign here, it really means and once you plug in the operation, plug in the, the, key, the key numbers, that, and the operation that they ask you to do, then you'll be able to solve the problem. So as you can see here, this, because the kids did not have the endurance to plug and play four different answer choices, I'm gonna suggest that you use my uh, mathematics chart to do this. As you can see, uh, I'm gonna read them all pretty quickly. Shelly needs three tickets for each ride. Three tickets for each ride because the number of tickets, left column, minus three, operation, that's the plug, six, minus three equals the number of rides. So that would be plug, operation, play, six, minus three. Letter B, that... Shelly needs three tickets because the number of tickets plug 12 plus three operation plus three equals the number of rides six. So we'll see if that's true. I don't think it will be because you can't take a larger number and add something and get a smaller number. Letter C, Shelly needs two tickets for each ride because the number of tickets uh, divided by two 
equals the number of rides. So number of six, six divided by two, three. 12 divided by two, six. 12, 18 divided by two, nine. 24 divided by 12, by two, 12. So that when you do plug the numbers and the operation, it does work. That was the correct answer, but let's check and see the other one. Shelly needs two tickets for each ride because the number of tickets plug uh, 6, 12, 18, 24 minus, it says minus, just make sure we get my reading glasses. I don't want to tell you the wrong information here. The number of tickets um, times uh, two equals the number of rides. Well, I can already tell that won't be true because if the number on the left is larger than the number on, on the right, the only way to get from a larger number to a smaller number is uh, to either subtract or to divide. And so that means that the only two answers that could be possible are letters A, because we're going from a larger number to a smaller number, or letter C, again, going from a larger to a smaller number. But because the keywords are different, six tickets, three rides, and because um, they're going from a larger number to a smaller number, the idea is going to be that you need to divide. So as I've done this, I plug. I went ahead and plugged in uh, for not just guess and check, because you don't have to guess and check anything because they've given you the actual plug and play, plug operation play, that tickets minus three equals rides. Six minus three does equal three. So far, A is true. But 12 minus three, nine does not equal six, false. 15 does not equal 9 when you subtract 3, false. Then 24 um, minus 3, 21 is not equal to 12. So A is incorrect. Tickets plus 3. You can never get a smaller number when you add. So you're going to see that all of these are going to be untrue for letter B. Letter C, when you take the tickets and divide by two, take the dividend, the numerator, and divide it by two, the denominator, for all four, you get the same answer that is in the column called rides. So, again, not checking, guess and check, because there's no guessing having to be involved there because they actually give you the numbers to plug and the operations. And so that's why I call it plug in the numbers and then apply the operation with the numbers. And since none of the answers work, like I said, with addition and subtraction, you cannot get a smaller number by adding or multiplying you can only get your answer by subtracting or dividing and so only one of them worked with subtraction in letter a but all of them worked in letter c so that's how i would solve number 27 on your third grade test that would and if you message me, I can send you a link to the class set of the mathematics charts. And as you can see here, um, the keywords 
you look here at the bottom, the keywords were different, um, rides and tickets. So we have to multiply or divide and your kids should have known that since they were trying to go from a bigger to a smaller number, the only way to do that would be to divide. So that's how you do that one. The next one, and again, we're, for some reason, we're still struggling with these um, parameter and area problems. If it says problem each side of this figure called an octagon is the same length period, the perimeter, perimeter, add up all sides is 72 inches period. Since they gave us the perimeter, then you can either subtract uh, to figure out how much each side does, has, or you can say, well, 72 inches keyword is different than eight sides because it's an octagon. And so in order to find out what is the length of one side, well, I have DQ there, not because of the word Dairy Queen, but one clue is, do we divide if the word each or one is in the question? And as you can see again here on the mathematics chart, if you see each one or per in the question, it says divide question mark. And the reason I have question mark, because it's not always the case, but it will be the case about probably 70 to 80 to even up to 90% of the time that will work. And so the next thing that I would do is say, okay, have your kids organize their numbers um, where the dividend the 72, the total perimeter is divided by the divisor, the eight sides that are in an octagon, then what we do is we multiply one number at a time until we find an answer. We multiply eight times something until we get an answer that's 72 or higher. And so there we go. Eight times five is 40. The, well, we multiplied eight, six, and we get an answer of 48, a product. Multiply seven, our answer is 56. Multiply eight, our answer is 64. And we multiply nine, the answer is 72. So what you write on the top goes on the top, the nine. Your answer, your product goes on the bottom. So your next thing to do in MOSRED is to subtract 72 minus 72 equals a, an RE remainder of zero. And you'll either drop and go back to the top or you're done. Since there's no, there are no other numbers, that means we're done. And that means that each side of this octagon is nine inches in length. So nine times eight. And so if your kids um, misunderstood the question and they were thinking, how many sides does an octagon have? It wouldn't be even eight inches, it would be eight sides. But the question is, what is the length in inches, if it says that, of one side? So you take the dividend 72 and divide it by the divisor 8, getting the answer of letter C. All right. The last one has to do with um, labor and income. Student expectation 3.9a, and again, less than half of the kids in Texas got this question correct. And so uh, remind your kids that if you have a compound subject, something that has to do with labor and income, then you need an answer choice that relates to both of those. Labor meaning the work that you do and the income being the money that you receive for doing that work. So let's take a look because it says he's describing his labor and income. 
not somebody else's. So it's important that you understand that it's his own. So Trey does volunteer work at a hospital, okay? Yes, he's doing labor, he's doing work, but volunteer means you don't get paid for it. So I'm gonna eliminate letter A. Trey pays a company to repair his roof, okay? Okay, that's not his labor, that's somebody else's labor. And since he's paying somebody, that's not an income, that's an expense money that's going out of his account. Trey takes $25 out of his bank and spends money at the store. Well, he's not doing labor. He's already done labor and apparently in the past and earned $25 from somewhere, but he's not having income, money coming into his bank. Money is going out of his bank because he's spending it at the store. And the last one, he takes dogs for a walk after school. That's labor, something that he's doing for work. And he earns $25. So there's my combination of labor and income. Just use a little two-headed monster here whenever you have a compound subject to see uh, if the answer choice matches up with what the question was asking. So that's how I would do those kind of strategies. If you're an elementary teacher and you're working with perimeter, labor and income, or how to plug and play T-charts to see which operations work the best, remember pop plug operation play for the t-charts remember mass red or division using perimeter and remember what the keywords labor and income mean when you combine them inside a problem. So take care, share this math video lesson with one of your teacher friends and look forward to hearing from you soon. Like the video on my YouTube page, uh, like it on my Facebook page, that really helps me and share or tag one of your math teacher friends. Take care.